All right, let's make this cool modular stone bridge. I started off by cutting a four by six by two and a half inch pieces. I, I cut three of them in all similar. And then I did the half circle underneath for the uh, underneath of the bridge uh, using my brand new Proxon that I got for Christmas. Um, man, that thing makes things easy. Although that being said, you can still do all of this with a uh, straight alpha knife or a crafting knife or kitchen knife for that matter. I mean, Proxon makes things way easier, apparently. I did not know that, but uh, yeah. So uh, here we are. I'm going to cut uh, a couple of pieces for the ramps and see what they f if they fit. And it started off with this piece, but I wasn't quite happy with it. So I recut another rectangle at four by six by two, two and a half. Nice and easy. And then I'm just going to draw a line on the top there from one uh, corner to the next. Just using that bar there just as a guide. Just push it through nice and easy. Man, that thing works. All right, so obviously these things are a little wide, so I'm just gonna mark off four inches. Slide those both through. Don't worry about any little broken bits and stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna work that into the mo into the model, making it look like uh, that it's older and a little disheveled. There's a few pieces missing from the bridge. Yeah, I think that'll work just nice. All right, so what we're gonna do is uh, measure one cent by two centimeters long for the bricks. I'm gonna start ripping off uh, pieces with the Proxon, about a half a centimeter wide. Again, you can do this with a knife. Proxon makes this a hundred times easier. Make sure you rip a bunch of these. I mean, uh, you can always use them later. Bricks always come in handy for these crafting jobs. Here, I'm just gonna use up some of my old scrap. All right, once you got those bricks cut out, start laying them. There's my wife giving me a little bit more room on the desk. Just offsetting them like you normally would lay a bunch of bricks. I'm gonna go down both sides, on one side and the other, so that they match. On both the bridge pieces and the ramps. And then don't worry about all that smooth stuff in between. I'm probably gonna carve that in with a bit of a pen there and give it some rock and stone texture, maybe some flagstone, maybe some river rock, we'll see. Got a new glue gun. I really like the way this thing handles. Couldn't tell you the name of it right now off the top of my head. But I like that it holds like an air gun. And just let that one set of bricks overhang a little bit. We're just gonna chop those off in the long run. Nice. We just cut those excess off. Nice and smooth. 
And we're going to do that with all three pieces of the bridge. So I took uh, one of those green stuff world rollers, the flagstone in particular, did the top of the three pieces of bridge as well as the top of the ramps. I mean, you really got to push down on these bad boys to get them to work. Obviously, they're not made for foam. They do work, though. They really do. Just got to remember when you go over them with the paint in the long run, you got to keep that paint thin so it doesn't completely fill all the crevices all the time. Here I am doing the ramps with the brick pattern as well. But I'm not just going to do the side there. I'm going to go down the front face of it as well. There, as you can see, it went down the front, leaving a little bit of a gap on the bottom. We'll be drawing in some stones there. We'll cut off the excess with a kitchen knife. There, drew in some stonework underneath and behind the bricks. Start off lightly with a pen, and then really work those crevices in there. Those crevices are going to be your defining points for your stonework underneath. We're creating the illusion that it's been built by stones. So really digging out those crevices really makes those stones uh, stand out. And we'll do that on the sides of the bridge pieces as well. And take your time with this. I'm not saying you got to plan it out. It should be random. But really just working it out and making sure that all the stones kind of work and fit. And then uh, what I like to do is grab this dentist tool here. It's kind of like a spear. It's one of my favorite ones. I bought a whole set at one point off Amazon. And really dig out those crevices. All right, so here I am. I'm going to put on my uh, one-inch grid pattern. All my terrain pretty much ends up with, uh, with the pattern. Uh, some people don't like um, working with grid. Some people think it ruins their terrain. Uh, I like it. I personally do. If you can work it into the artwork, I kind of really like that it kind of just blends in with the background because you're so used to seeing it. And all you see really in the end is the, the terrain itself. I started off by maybe coming down half inch on the front end and then just working it out. And just run that pen back and forth, nice and light. Here we are, all the stonework's kind of worked into the side. We're going to go at it with my famous aluminum ball. And I mean, don't be gentle with this thing. I, I get pretty aggressive. Um, I find that uh, sometimes it creates uh, four more, far more facets and, and, and more depth if you get aggressive with it. But don't forget to do the tops now while you can and the sides and you got to do the underneath you might as well i mean sure you'll probably never see it but you never know you might use this for something else laying on its side in a, in a pinch on your on your table as you can see i also drew those stones underneath and i know you don't really need to do that but visually for me it just reminded me that i needed to carry those crevices all the way underneath nice so one of these pieces of bridge, I'm gonna have broken in half on purpose. So I cut it on a bit of a wicked angle, giving one overhang and one underhang on both sides. Just making sure they both still fit together. I wanna to be able to use it so that you can push them together and make it a kind of an old cracked bridge or you can slowly or slightly separate them and make it just slightly broken or you can really, really separate them up and make it look like a completely destroyed bridge. And don't forget, you're supposed to have uh, rock all the way through this thing. So let's draw the rock pattern on the front of the broken sides as well. 
And here I'm really going to take care to really dig in and really give it that broken bridge look. Making sure I go underneath with them as well. Getting out that dentist tool again. All right, so what I've done is I grabbed some River Rock from the dollar store. I'm gonna use those as the edging on all these pieces. Just glued them in place now. I could have put a stone railing. I could have, I could have done a couple of different things. I liked this idea. I really think it looks good. You can imagine to scale these stones are probably two and a half by two and a half feet. So I mean, they're they're pretty big. I think they would look cool. All right, for the basing, I ended up just marking out a four inch by one inch strips with the cardboard. This is just a box. I don't know if uh, it might have been a toy box. I'm not sure. Use a lot of cracker boxes, just like everyone else. I think I went a little overboard on this. It didn't have to be this perfect, but whatever, measuring makes sense. Let me just grab my shears there and we'll cut them out. And these are just for gluing on the bottom of the foots of the bridge. And then once I glue them on any excess, you can always just cut off, leave about a mill or two, just overhanging it underneath there. And make sure they're nice and flush up against the one side as well. You wanna be able to butt these things together in the long run. As you can see, I exclusively use uh, hot glue. Um, I'm a hot glue fanatic. I like, um, I'm kind of impatient. I like to just keep moving forward when I'm crafting. And you can get used to using this stuff. I mean, honestly, man, the little wisps or nothing, they go away. And you can always just give it a little dab. You gotta imagine, you just gotta get this thing tacked on. Of course, I didn't tack that rock on well enough, but here we are going again. And you just need to get them tacked on, man, because you're gonna go over this with a PVA water solution. It's gonna harden up like a shell. Then you're gonna paint it, there's another shell. And then if you're like me, you're gonna varnish it or you're gonna spray coat it or something, and that's another shell. These things are gonna hold together once they're together. You just gotta tack everything down. That way the hot glue doesn't show. Just finishing off some of those uh, bridge feet, making sure that everything's got cardboard on it. So it's nice and flat for my table. There's my wife in the background. I was supposed to tell her I was recording. See, and then I took a lighter to the one side of the broken piece. Make it look like a, maybe a scorch ray or meteor or maybe a fireball hit it. All right, and I told you I'm going to have this modular, so I'm going to use some magnets. I like magnets. I don't use them on everything, but on some things they make sense. I'm going to measure a half inch down. One inch from either side, making sure that they're all exactly the same and in the same placement. And then I take my little dentist tool and I just cut out a little circle. You can do it like this, you can do it with a knife, you can grab your uh, hot glue gun and just push the face of it in there and until it melts to the size you want. I mean, if you're gonna do that though, just do it in a ventilated area. And the trick is with the magnets is making sure that one pole is, one north pole is in and one north pole is out. They need to be opposite and they need to be identical on every piece for this to work out. 
So I put a little bit of hot glue in behind there, making sure that I've got this magnet opposite of the other one. So if it's pulling, now I want this one pushing. Just double checking. And then I go over the front face of those magnets with a little bit of hot glue. Just to really make sure they cement it in there. And another loose rock. These rocks are pretty heavy. You're gonna have that from time to time unless you get crazy, crazy with the super glue. I don't mind to retacking them down because like I said in the long run, it's all gonna get mod podged up. We're gonna do this on both sides of all three bridge pieces in the same pattern. And we're gonna do it on the front face of both ramps. All right, I'm double checking again. I double check a lot with these magnets. Nice. A little bit of hot glue over top. Make sure you let this dry. I get a little impatient sometimes. And that heat from the magnets really conducts, conducts uh, um, well, obviously the heat's really conducted from the magnets because it's metal. So, I mean, it's going to stay warmer longer. And that's what just happened there. I ended up uh, pulling my one magnet out accidentally because it wasn't completely dry yet. It's all good. We'll just flip this over and do the other side while that one's dry. Nice, magnets work like a champ. All right, so we're gonna go over this with my supposed Mod Podge solution. I go a 60-40, 60 water, 40 PVA glue. I like my shit a little runnier. That way I can guarantee that it's gonna get into the crevices underneath the rocks and stuff like that. Remember, this is all gonna help hold everything together. Really make sure you get it in all the crevices over all the styrofoam. As soon as you hit this thing with any kind of spray paint, the accelerant's gonna start eating this foam. So unless you're planning on um, having it eat the foam on purpose, make sure you get all the crevices. And again, I'm expected to see all the sides on my table at one point or another, so everything's getting painted. There's my cat coming down the hallway in the background. Tequila, making her debut. And there's my wife following her again. She's gonna give her a little brush. She likes to hang out by the desk to get brushed. Didn't even realize this was still recording like this with my wife beside me. Don't know why I did the bottom of that foot, but whatever. I didn't do the rest of them, obviously. Make sure you do it underneath. No point in half-assing this. You might as well do the whole thing. Doesn't save you that much time. I'm just putting a little bit more on top now on all the pieces now that they've all been done. I'm gonna add a bit of this uh, broken glass from the dollar store, glow in the dark. The glow in the dark is irrelevant. I'm gonna paint over it, obviously. 
but I like the size. I'm going to put it up against the sides where I feel the dirt would have um, come together as people and travelers have used this bridge over years. And then I use these other glass pieces for a little bit of bigger stones. All right, here we go. Little pieces on top, all modge podged out. So I took it all outside and we spray bombed everything. Nice flat black. And we're gonna start painting. I'm gonna start off with uh, medium gray. Maybe a little darker than medium. And we're looking for like a 90, 95% coverage. Pretty much the whole thing. I'm just gonna slather it on there. Trying to keep it a little thinner on top in the long run because you want to get some of that flagstone detail to still pop out. I mean, you could have solved that. You could carve those stones in yourself. It'd just take a little longer. I was being lazy. Probably would have looked better, actually, but still, it looked really good in the end. So you can slowly see some of that detail starting to come out. Make sure you do the fronts, the backs, the sides underneath you'll notice in the long run I really like to layer up my paint jobs so there's one piece done make sure you do it to all three in both ramps Coming back with uh, a lighter gray. Don't worry, this will tone down on its own. Looking at maybe a 40, 50% coverage, maybe a bit better. I'm gonna do another hit up on this anyways. Really see that detail starting to come out now. Trying to keep lighting in mind, I try to keep coming from the top down. And there, that's not too bad with light gray. All right, so let's pull out some burnt umber. Add a little bit of spun gold, just a couple of drops, just to give it a little bit of lightness and shine. And we'll dry brush that all over the place. looking for maybe you know, 20%, maybe 30% coverage. Just giving it some variation. Very, very random. Make sure you do it to all three pieces in both ramps. All right, so I pulled out some cinnamon. I'm gonna do a little dabbing with these brushes now. These dollar store brushes for makeup are awesome for this. And then we're gonna move on to a little bit of white. Now I know it's gonna look a little extreme right now. Really bright. Man, but once you hit this up with a nice dark wash, that's gonna dumb down so fast. You'd be glad that you did it. You don't have to do the underneath. I believe I did anyways, just for the sake of it. And here we go. We're gonna hit it up with my homemade Newland oil. Learned it from uh, Luke Apps from Geek Gaming. I'll leave a description in the bottom of his actual name. It's just a bit of uh, polish, water, and some black ink. And I'm really glad that he showed us how to, how to make this stuff, man, because uh, boy, do I go through a lot of it. This is the stuff I used right here. Got it off Amazon. It was the closest to the thing he was using on, uh, on his video. And actually, you know what? I'll, I'll leave a link for the, the video on the bottom. You guys can go check it out. That guy knows stuff. 
And here we are, we're just working that oil in there. Getting it all over everything, man. As you can see, my hands are pretty black by now. We got these cool dropper bottles. They work like a champ for really getting it on there. Still just working it out a bit. And I know it looks super dark right now, but I mean, again, once it dries, it's gonna look way different. Man, does that shit work. All right. I'd also use a little bit of a brown wash here and there, just throw it on there randomly. And I've got this green wash I like to use on all my stone work and all my concrete work. I just give it a kind of a bit of an algae look, a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a mold or something growing on it. You get it in some of the recesses and some of the crevices. I just basically just spray it on there, let it do its thing. All right, and here it is, finished product. All three pieces for the bridge and two ramps. You can make a nice single bridge just going across a small river. You can make a longer bridge. The two pieces, because they're magnet, will actually stand upright on their own. I feel like there's tons of stuff you can do with this, man. And I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing this with you. And uh, like and subscribe. And hopefully I can keep coming up with some decent videos. They might not be quite as quick as I've been getting these last two out. But uh, I'll do my best.